Thank you for joining us this evening. We want to help you feel prepared for your kids and for, for yourself when it comes to navigating devices, games, and social media. My name is Thais Perez, and I'm the coordinator of equity and inclusion for Schomburg School District 54. I am joined this evening by school resource officer Gust. Officer Gust has been a Schomburg police officer for 30 years and is one of two school resource officers that serves both Frost and Keller Junior High Schools. This evening, we want to spend some time talking to you about how we in District 54 are creating an inclusive culture for belonging, as well as how we are currently teaching di digital citizenship and respect to the students in District 54. We want to talk to you about how to parent your child's technology, how to look for predators online, social media, becoming more familiar with social media networks, cyberbullying, and making you aware of the consequences tied to some of those technology threats that we see. We also want to leave you with some ways to protect your child, and then we'll leave some time for questions at the end. Since the District 54 strategic plan was adopted by the Board of Education in 2018, district staff has fully embraced the vision of ensuring whole child success. There has been significant investment in the implementation of positive psychology and developing long-term optimism with staff, students, and families. District develops social emotional learning curriculum and providing high levels of instructional technology and engagement. These investments have provided increased balance to the long-standing focus of academic excellence. Recently added is the adoption of the equity and inclusion vision statement, which is aligned with our strategic goals. Our equity and inclusion vision statement has a heavy emphasis on cultivating a sense of belonging and dignity for all students in District 54. We are here this evening to highlight the importance of that. Some of the behaviors on social media stem from children's desire to belong. We know that children crave connection and at times they will seek that connection by any means necessary. We believe that each child deserves to be healthy, safe, engaged, supported, and challenged using comprehensive approaches and programming. Two ways we are able to provide such a high level of support for students is our SEL curriculum and our digital citizenship lessons. Social emotional learning deals with students' ability to manage emotions, um, their ability to um, make decisions and demonstrate responsible behavior, maintaining positive relationships, and developing ways to control and manage stress. Our digital citizenship aims to provide students with guidance on topics such as personal safety, being able to recognize and avoid unsolicited or deceptive electronic communication, cyber citizenship, etiquette, and bullying, learning safe and responsible ways to use technology and the internet, and safe and responsible ways to communicate. Predator information, being able to recognize, avoid, and report, report any online sexual solicitation. Cybersecurity, reporting all illegal electronic activities and communications. And lastly, the intellectual property and digital literacy, learning about copyright laws um, and how to avoid getting into trouble with those. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Gust. I'm with the Schomburg Police Department. I'm one of the two SROs that District 54 has. Um, so tonight we're talking about um, trying to be safe online and social media and what parents should know. Um, we're just going to scratch the surface on this stuff. There's a handout in the back that goes into a little bit more detail on stuff. Uh, but the main thing is you have to kind of remember you guys are the parents when it comes with your kids and social media. Keeping up with kids and social media can be very challenging, very challenging. Uh, the platforms change, you know, weekly, monthly, sometimes daily. There's always something new. Instead of trying to wrap your head around something to understand it, it's better just to understand how your child uses that social media platform, how they communicate with everybody. Um, 
did you know that you have to be 13 to have these social media platforms, right? Or with parents' permission. So with parents' permission, they could be younger. The problem is that really doesn't happen too much. These kids just put in fake dates of birth. They're older than what they are. There's unintended consequences with that. They're targeted with maybe, in, well, inappropriate uh, advertisements for stuff. So we have to be really aware of what our kids do online and what platforms they're using. When we talk about the ground rules and everything, you know, the common stuff, safe passwords, secure passwords, um, limit the information they share. What does that mean? That means like their birthdays, their address, their phone numbers, what cities they live in, what sports they play. You never know who they're talking to on the other end, whether it's a gaming flat platform or the information they give out on these social medias. They have, you have to talk with your kids about this stuff. Um, I kind of call it a, a golden ticket. Um, give your kids a golden ticket because when parents find out and I, what I've seen, um, and I have older kids too, they're 30 and 32. I don't have to worry about half of the stuff. But what I see is give your kids a golden ticket. What does that mean? Kids are going to screw up. They're going to. And when they screw up stuff, when the stuff online, it's scary. And your first reaction is maybe is anger. Try to settle that down. You want your kids to come to you. The trick about being a good parent is when your kids are in trouble, that's when you want them to come to you. How you do that, I don't know. When we're dealing with the internet, give them a golden ticket. Like, look, if anything you see or hear anything or something said to you, you see something come to me, you're not going to get in trouble. I want you to be safe. Um, like I said, passwords, they shouldn't be sharing their passwords with anybody, not even their parents, not, well, I'm sorry, with their parents, not with their friends' parents. Um, I always tell the kids just to share their passwords with their parents or a trusted adult in their family, but not their friends. Um, check their privacy settings on their phones, on their computers, see if it's set for everyone to see them on these certain platforms, which we'll talk about a little bit. Is it just private? It should be private just for their friends to see them, not for the whole world to see them. Okay. Um, in the back of the room, there's a little handout that talks about some of the stuff we're gonna talk about now. Um, let's first talk about Snapchat. Um, we have to worry about, again, privacy settings. Uh, if you go on to Snapchat, if you check on privacy settings at the top right, um, you wanna look at, uh, you can see all their posts. You can click on your child's name, you can check and see all their posts, all the pictures they sent. Um, location, the location should be sent on only me. That means their location does not go out to everybody. When they take pictures or they uh, post stuff, their location can be sent to people and they can know where they're at. That's how they can find out your address. Uh, groups, you wanna check in Snapchat what groups they're on. If you, uh, there's an icon on the top left. If you click on the groups, you can see who they're actually having Snapchats with. And hopefully it should be their friends because hopefully your, their privacy setting is set on their friends. Again, your kids can change all this stuff, right? Your kids could have fake accounts. It really comes down to that relationship you have with your child. And then there's a thing called on Snapchat, it's uh, my eyes only. And it is a private photo vault that uh, is set up in the program itself. So you click on, uh, there's an icon, looks like a deck of cards, you click on it and you look for um, my eyes only. And if it requires a password, that means your child has already set up an account. Those are photos for whatever reason he or she is saving. So if there is something on there, you want to have that password from your child and see what that is all about. Instagram. Kind of the same thing. You can block followers. Um, a lot of kids have multiple accounts and everything, even if they share it with their, their parents. I know my stepdaughters, they have their own account that I see, but they have a, they found out they had another private account. Well, thank God they gave it to their mother. They want me to see it, but there's a private account. So a lot of kids have multiple accounts. Um, you want to make sure that, again, it's set for private, just for them and their friends to see. Instagram, the photos never go away. They're always there. I know they say it'll go away after so many days or so many hours. It's there. Um, it's there because it has to be there for law enforcement. When we uh, investigate 
uh, inappropriate stuff with Instagram, all this stuff. Um, we send preservation letters and the photos are saved. The kids think it goes away. It does not. It is there. Okay. TikTok, again, the theme is all this stuff has to be private. Um, the thing about TikTok is with, with whole internet, you're, you're communicating with everybody all over the world. So if your child even has a fake date of birth saying they're older than they are, who knows what they're seeing. Um, with TikTok, I know if you swipe right now, you can see all the people that are doing stuff that is live, right? You're not just swiping up. You swipe, if you swipe right, anybody that's doing stuff live and there's some pretty inappropriate stuff going on in there. TikTok seems to be pretty good taking that stuff down right away, but uh, they can't be everywhere. Um, of course, everyone heard about the TikTok challenges and uh, how that stuff is inappropriate. Uh, we really didn't see any of that in 54, which was nice. They were, they were on top of that. Um, again, I can't stress it enough. It has to be private for them and their friends. You'll, they can tell you that, but you really have to double check, have that conversation with your child and um, make sure they're telling you the truth. You know your kid. Okay. Gaming apps, this one, if you ever, I like, I, I play <laughs> Battlefield on, on PlayStation and you are talking with people all over the world, all over the world. And you, that one's really hard to block. Um, again, if you just wanna play with your friends online, that's great, but it, it is fun playing with people all over the world. Uh, just be aware when something can be inappropriate when, the, when they're talking with someone and they wanna take them out of that game into a different platform, like a WhatsApp platform, a different platform uh, that's not in the United States, like WhatsApp, it's out of Canada. They try to get them in these different platforms where they could talk to these kids. They don't wanna do it here in the United States because there's programs set up that tracks everything. Um, again, the passwords strong. You should know all your kids' passwords to everything. You should know them all. If your kids don't want to share your passwords with you, you're the parent. Take that phone away. Take the device away. I know everybody has it. It's peer pressure from fourth graders up to the eighth grade. It's all peer pressure, a lot of the stuff. But remember, you're the parent you have to keep in mind what's going on. You can just Google it. There's so many programs out there that you can put on your child's phone. And depending on how much you pay for it, it's every incoming outgoing text, every incoming outgoing photo. It's not just tracking where they're at, it's what they're getting. I highly recommend that. I can't recommend one for you. There's a bunch out there. Okay. Okay, so when things go wrong, <laughs> we'll do this one together, right? Um, share your expectations on what you want your child to do when they maybe see or hear something, something on the internet that's wrong. Um, sh don't have them take like a, 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 a photo of it, a screenshot of it. Because when you take a screenshot of it and those platforms, everybody sees that a screenshot's taken, right? We don't want your kids to be bullied. We want them, we want them to be safe, right? If they tell you about it, you take a picture of that. You save that evidence. You save that for the police or you save that for the school to, to share it with the principal. Um, help them recognize that, talk with them to, to, to see how things can get out of hand very quickly. Again, with Snapchat, they think that the picture goes away. It doesn't, right? People take screenshots. People take pictures of it and it passes it along. Or when something is said, it really, really gets out of hand with that and kind of can turn into bullying, which we don't want to do that either. So the school is really proactive on that stuff. And a little bit later, we'll talk about how and who you should contact. But the main thing is, is the relationship you have with your, your child. Anything you want to add? Um, as you continue to share your expectations for appropriate behavior with your with your children, um, we do believe that this preventative strategy um, 
is, is highly effective when we circle back to those conversations often. Um, I'm a mother of three young kids myself. I have a 12 year old, a 10 year old and a three year old. And I have to tell you, I watched the three year old on some of these apps and I'm pretty impressed with how quickly, right? They learned this. And this is why that, that conversation really is just multiple times. It's not just a one-time deal. Um, in fact, just kind of going back to some of those um, some of those apps that we had talked about, Instagram, um, for those of you that don't know, there is a Finsta, which is a way for um, children to create another Instagram account. So it looks like they have an Instagram and then they're friends with their parents, right? So these things are changing each day. It's important just to um, stay up on, on those. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. So um, when things go wrong, right, there's different layers of support. And we want to just talk to you um, about some of the best options, right? When, um, when to contact the school and then when to contact the SRO or when to contact 911, right? When children are not getting along in the classroom, on the playground, um, you know, just within um, any conversation that they're having, that will be handled by our school administrators, right? Any issues with bullying in the hallway, at classroom, at resource, we could handle that at school. Children that maybe are sad about an event that just happened in their lives um, that might need some more of that social emotional support. We have psychologists and social workers in every building to provide support with that. What we are unable to do in the school setting is to launch an investigation, especially when the event did not happen on school grounds. And so that's really important to know when you are experiencing this as a parent, um, when who to call first, right? If it happened at school, we're able to provide a layer of support. But when some of these things are happening at night, right, or maybe on the weekends, um, that is not on school grounds. And so while sometimes it might involve students in the same school, it also might involve students in another school, um, which is why it's so important to have that partnership that we have with our school resource officers. We do pull in our school resource officers when there's cases of cyberbullying or any other social media issues, um, or if someone is possibly using your child's information to create a fake account, right? That's a higher level of investigation. We do work a lot with the schools. A lot of times the, the, the incident might start in the school, like the, the, the outcry starts in the school. But then when you look into it, it's like, everything happened at their home. Nothing happens, doesn't take place in the school. Everything is online, right? So the administrators will get us involved. Um, clearly, if anyone threatens self-harm, threat to a school, doesn't matter what day it is, what time it is, you call the police. You de that's a 911 call, right? Um, but if it has to deal with some type of bullying and it takes place outside of school, I, like I said, we work together. Um, they'll, they'll share it with us. A lot of times, sometimes the kids might live in Streamwood and Hoffman Estates. So we'll get those SROs involved. Um, the bullying part, um, it's really hard because we do work together, right? Um, when you deal with law enforcement and bullying and uh, uh, anything like that, it is, uh, the juvenile system is not set up for punishment. It's up to get kids help, right? So. Does every kid get arrested per se? No, no. Um, do, do they get some type of services? Absolutely. Whether they get it at school or they get it through the village of Schomburg, if it's a Schomburg case, um, it doesn't go unnoticed. Even if those, those, the threat of harm stuff, um, it's taken seriously, they're all taken seriously, and there's always some type of follow-up, usually by both the school and the district. When we talk about cyberbullying, that's the, the definition of it, and it's really, really long. There's a lot more to it, right? But it's just using an electronic communication device, whether it's a phone or it's a laptop. Um, and there's a, like I said, there's a lot more to it. It falls under electronic harassment. Um, even if it doesn't take place in the school, it's between two Schomburg students on a Saturday, right? And a report is made. We share that information with the school, whatever schools the kids go to, and we'll come up with an approach on how we want to handle this because we do not want that action to carry over into the school. And that is just where someone uses uh, someone else's name and makes a false account in, for anything on any of these platforms. You'd be surprised how much that happens. 
um, that is just a little extra uh, extra protection that the law put in there for people. It's an extra charge or a crime when you're dealing with bullying. Um, there are state charges, there are city charges. Um, again, the juvenile system is not set up for punishment. It's set up to get kids help. And that's the main goal of uh, the police department for juveniles and for District 54. So that's the million dollar question. So how do you do it? Right, with all the peer pressure that's out there. Um, her three-year-old who's good on the phone. Uh, my my six-year-old granddaughter who fixes the phone, my phone for me. So how do you handle that when uh, they're doing something wrong? It goes back to that golden ticket. You want your kids to come to you in the worst of times. And that could be the worst of times because you know bullying is 24 seven with electronics. So you just have to have that good relationship with your kid. And uh, if discipline is involved, maybe, you, maybe it shouldn't be involved. Maybe if they're telling you the truth, maybe that's, that's all you need, right? There's always that option where you can take the device away, a traditional punishment. But these kids nowadays are growing up so fast, learning so fast with just the click of a mouse or typing in whatever they can. If your child comes to you, I say you're doing a pretty good job. When we look at the layers of support that we're able to offer as a district, we're really proud of the multiple layers to support our students, right? Because we know that mistakes happen. Um, one of the first layers we have are our school social workers, psychologists, and deans in our junior high to provide that connection um, and, and really that reteaching. Um, we find that that reteaching, whether it's from a psychologist, social worker, a classroom teacher, a principal, a dean, is so important because we want to equip our children with the ways to navigate this, these situations in the future. Um, and so we really, um, we really are able to provide that reteaching on a small scale and a bigger scale when it's necessary. Um, and then, of course, the partnership with our school resource officers, their focus is to help and support our, our children, right? Um, that whole child success. That's why that partnership is so important. So we're coming to the end here. We're going to leave um, our, the rest of our time together for questions, um, both in person and if we have any questions on the chat. So from any of our members here, do you have any questions that we can help answer while you have all these great resources here? So I took my time to come out today and I tried to bring them as well to listen and learn because we've had problems with all this that you've just mentioned. So one of my question goes to, you know, the usage of their, you know, their laptop that they use at school. They have this um, Google whatever that they use. And on the side, they have this chatting box whereby they can chat with their friends and everything. Is there a way you can disable it? Like as a parent, I'm not comfortable with the fact that she has that on when she's working, because sometimes a classmate chat with her, and I've told her often times, you can't do that. I don't want you chatting while you're working. You need to stay focused. So I've been struggling with how to this, you know, this in, enable that so that she won't be able to have that medium. So if there's a way you can enlighten me to do this, or how do we go about it? You know, it will help. I've been to the school several times. They keep a tab on it. They see what she's doing. They keep control of that. But I personally don't want that enabled. I want it disabled. So how do we go about that? Thank you. So I think at the school, what we use is a program called HAPARA. 
And um, through that program, the teachers are able to um, watch everything that the kids are doing. And so um, what we will do is I, I don't know if it can be disabled, but we're going to find that answer out for you. Um, so you um, have that option to do at home. Um, some uh, obviously some of the things are on the devices that are provided by the schools. There's a lot that we can do. So we will um, find out from our IT department how that works. Um, and then on your phone, as Officer Gus says, you know, just making sure that those privacy settings are on um, is going to do um, a great deal for you. So um, we'll write that down and we'll get back to you on that. Any other questions? So there are a couple of questions. Now I got kicked off the chat, so I apologize for that. But um, Mr. Schmidt here has uh, passed these questions on. One was asking if this presentation would be emailed out. Um, it will. And so any questions that you have that um, have not been answered, um, somebody from either your child's school or from uh, the uh, Schomburg Police Department will respond to you regarding the question that you have. But not only are we gonna send out the presentation and the recording of it, we are also gonna send out the um, quick tip sheet that um, we have here in person. Um, so you will have access to that. Um, it's a great um, handy little three page ditty that will um, tell you how to go through and take a look at those privacy settings. Um, because unless you start going through those, you really don't know until you actually have your child's device in front of you. So we will uh, make sure that that's accessible to you as well. Um, there is also a question here about, um, let me just look at it real quick, sorry. Um, somebody is asking about um, cell phones in the school. There is a board policy against having cell phones in schools. And so um, we do know that sometimes parents set up with the administration that um, their, their child needs a device, um, a cell phone at school, because maybe they um, get off the school bus and they have to go from the bus stop to their homes and parents feel much more comfortable having um, those devices with their child. And we understand that. However, the requirement is, is that while they're in school, um, you should communicate with your child's administrator or your child's classroom teacher, tell them that um, those phones uh, need to be turned off and in their backpack. The first time it rings, in a classroom, you will be notified by your child's teacher. The second time it rings, um, then that phone will end up in the front office and you'll need to come pick it up. And so there are numerous reasons why um, there's a policy for that. Um, but most importantly, it does disturb the learning environment. Um, but we do understand as parents, and we are all parents ourselves, um, that the need to have a uh, connection with your child. So we just ask that you do make sure that um, you uh, talk to your child about that and then talk to the administration or the classroom teacher about that. Are there any more questions? You can um, shoot them into the um, chat. Okay. Wait. I think one came up. Oh, somebody is thanking us. We are so glad you joined us. Actually, over 100 people have joined us either in person or um, via the um, via Zoom tonight. Uh, we're very, very appreciative. And as you know, from all of us, it's really important that we continue to team with you because um, we all have the same goal. And it's to make sure that your child grows up he healthy, safe, and well-educated. And so um, we have that goal. We appreciate the partnership that you have with us in the schools. Um, and so we do treat your child as if they are our very own. And so uh, please continue to communicate with us um, when something does pop up on social media. As Officer Gus says, we do not take it lightly. We will um, make sure that we connect with the proper people to make sure that your child feels safe. And so we thank you for coming tonight um, and we hope you have a good rest of your evening. One more question. Can your location be count, uh, found with TikTok, TikTok? Do you know that? Yes. 
I'm not 100% sure, but yes, um, with everything uh, on the internet, your location can be found. You can shut that off on TikTok in the settings portion, uh, but that doesn't mean your kid won't turn it on, but you can turn that off in the, the settings. Okay, so the next question is, um, someone is asking if there um, is a way to put a limit on a child's Chromebook. And so um, if you would give us a little more clarifying information, I don't know if you wanted to time out, um, you know, or if you if you yourself can put a limit as a parent, and you absolutely can, um, of how much time they spend on their device. So if somebody would um, ask a clarifying uh, or give us a little more information there, maybe we could answer that question. Another question did pop up. We will be providing the handout to everybody that is here virtually with all of those um, great tips. And I think that the question is regarding um, about blocking um, things while they are at home. Um, our, we do have filters when they are at school. And um, there are certain things that will be filtered out at home if it is a district device. I will tell you, um, the administrators in this room have access to everything a child does um, at home. And so there is a program that alerts us to anything that um, is concerning, whether it be explicit information that's going in or even self-harm. And so um, when those things come up, especially if they're self-harm, you will get a call from your child's principal immediately that your child has put something into a district device. Now, we're, obviously, it's only through a district device that we can see that. So, um, you know, we do have those filters um, on to protect our students. Um, you know, as we look at um, personal devices like cell phones or possibly tablets that children have at home, um, that's where it's going to come in where you're going to want to put some protections on your child's device that's personally owned to them. Anything else? Okay, so the timeout question we will also look into um, and we will talk to our IT department um, if it can time out um, after a certain amount of time. Um, so we will get back to you on that. Students cannot delete their history on a district owned device. So there was a question about tracking applications. I'm going to let um, Officer Gus um, field that one. So for the tracking applications, your best bet is just to Google it. There are so many out there. They do so many things, like I said earlier, whether it's just text messages or photos, you can, you can break it up, or just outgoing or incoming. It all depends on what you want. Um, Again, that has to be put on your child's phone and your child has to keep that on their phone. You know, you can pay for everything. And if the, your child takes it off the phone, it's not gonna work. So I cannot give you a specific one. There's just so many, your best bet is just to research it yourself and find what works best for you. There was also a question about um, whether or not we give social media information to our students. We do. Um, not only um, is that um, a several day lesson um, at the very beginning of the school year for all of our students since kindergarten through eighth grade do use devices. We do teach them um, how to be socially responsible on those devices. And um, we do um, talk um, a great deal about the privacy of those devices and sharing passwords and how they shouldn't do those things. And so um, us having the same message as our parents um, is very powerful. Um, and especially um, it's powerful when um, a parent um, frequently checks their child's devices as, at home as we do here at school. And so um, as a parent myself, 
Um, I do pay the cell phone bills. So I do um, look at my children's devices on a regular basis. I do also make sure that I charge those in my bedroom. So um, the children are not on them at midnight. And so those are some of the safeguards I do in my home. It's um, something that you may want to consider doing for your child. My other question readers, did I forget anything? Um, well, yes, um, there are students that um, do have a difficult time with the YouTube, especially when they're at home. Um, it doesn't tend to happen in the school because we keep the kids quite busy, but it may happen in your home. And so if YouTube be uh, becomes a problem, um, the district can block YouTube. Um, we have had people that have asked us if um, like kid YouTube could be available if we block YouTube. YouTube is YouTube and we would block the entire thing. And so um, we do have those conversations. You can reach out to your child's teacher or one of the administrators in the building. Um, we're happy to work with you on that. Um, we do know that the children get caught up in that. And um, sometimes that can lead them into things that we don't want them led into. And so um, certainly again, uh, keeping those Chromebooks um, in your bedroom at night so they're being charged there or those cell phones that can help um, eliminate that a little bit. But if it's a problem for your child, we can certainly support that on our devices. Uh, let me add one thing. Um, you also, on your home, your routers, if you send into your router, you can see what devices are on your system and you can block those devices. So you could shut off your child's device at a certain time at bedtime, whatever time that is. And then they, you can actually set it up what time it goes off what time it goes on multiple times throughout the day so even when they come home you can have it blocked till they get their homework done something like that but that's another avenue you can use check your router check the settings in there and block those devices and also i you said it can't stress it enough when it comes to charging these devices at nighttime i don't even say put it in the kitchen put it in your bedroom chargers are in your bedroom they're shut off charging Any other questions for us? Again, if you know you you think about it later on tonight and you have additional questions, always feel free to reach out to any of us. We are happy to answer your questions and support you. And if we don't know the answer, we have a lot of people in School District 54 that probably do know the answer and we will get back to you um, with your questions. And so we appreciate your time tonight. Um, we're very glad that you were um, here teaming with us. Thank you.